Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined in the studio today by Stevie Nicol and Don, still here. Uh, we'll kick things off. I thought you'd be a weird bit saying like <laughs> I think everybody did. Uh, we'll kick things off the Olympic final today, France against Spain. Whether you think it should be in the uh, Olympics or not, i tell you what, it was a thoroughly entertaining match. It would be France who would open the scoring. Spain then would take a 3-1 lead. France, though, would push extra time thanks to a very late penalty within the 90 minutes. But two goals to Spain in extra time would see them crowned gold medalists. And, of course, it's a feeling that Spain are well accustomed to. Take a look at this. They are currently the men's European champions, the National League champions, the Olympic champions, under-19 champions. The women, meanwhile, are the World Cup champions, National League champions, under-20 World Cup champions, under-19, under-17, and under-17 champions as well. In fact... A Spanish team involved in a final hasn't lost in 28 matches, if you include uh, their domestic sides as well. It's incredible when you look at their records in the final. As we welcome Frank LeBeuf and uh, Gab Marcotti, we'll talk about the repercussions of this game going forward in a moment. But just overall, Don, over 90 minutes, this is a lot of fun. Well, 120 minutes is a lot say, of fun. It was incredible. I mean, one of the best finals I think I've seen for a long time. The standard of football is amazing. I think Barca's Youth Academy had seven players in their starting 11. Uh, or certainly in their squad. But the flow of the game was frightening. Spain were brilliant for the first 45. Then France just absolutely pummeled them in the second half. But you thought they weren't going to score. They were hitting the crossbar. The goalkeeper was pulling off saves. They scored two late goals to take an extra time. You think, right, Spain are done because France were just pushing and pushing and pushing. And then Camejo, who came off the bench, got a couple of goals. And it was just the way the game flowed at the end when Spain were winning 4-3 and France put a ball in the box and the young keeper caught it. You think, right, just fall down because you're going to win 4-3. Take your time. There's 20 seconds left on the clock. No, he zinged one up to his top man, to his front man, young Cameo, and he zinged one with his arm probably 40, 50, 60 yards into his stride. He then chipped the goalkeeper. A referee blew for full time. Amazing game. Frank, you said you weren't going to watch it. Did you watch it in the end? Um, if, I was, if I wasn't forced to do so, I was advised by our boss oh, to watch it. Professional, professional. Uh, I like it, Frank. And... <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it was right, and I enjoyed it. Um, I still think that uh, football shouldn't be part of the Olympics. It's not a, the spirit of the Olympics. It's not even a, a, a sport of the Olympics. But that was a great entertainment, and I enjoyed. And uh, congratulations to uh, Spain. I think they were clinical. They, they, were, they knew exactly what to do, especially the first half. France had a lack of, uh, let's say, attention defensively in the first half. I think the ref at his part in two actions, oh. you know, on the third, especially the third goal, the free kick, the obstruction, and he didn't give the same obstruction to Mateta in the first half against Garcia, but whatever, you know, let's say the best team won, it was a great entertainment, we are pleased that the, the French team won a uh, silver medal, and it didn't happen in football for 40 years, and, and uh, the last time was a gold medal in Los Angeles, 84, it was great, but I still think that I shouldn't watch those games. <laughs> there you go. But professionally, you did. Um, a simple question for you, Gab. Why is Spain so good? It's a great question. I mean, they, 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 the, the saying you want to say is uh, uh, they don't play finals. They just win finals. Yeah. Uh, there's a talent. There's a resilience. Don't forget they nearly got knocked out in the, uh, in the semifinal, of course. Um, I just think they've invested, I know we've been very critical and rightly so of the Spanish FA for many reasons, but this has been a long time coming. They've invested a lot of money. They have a ton of expertise. Uh, they've got wonderful infrastructure up and down the country. There's so much competition on the men's side and the women's side as well. It's been like this for for a good decade and you know they're bearing the fruits again and and you saw this as well obviously the men's euros were you know there weren't necessarily that many superstars rodri aside in the team uh they had guys who were injured and whatnot and yet you know they came together and, and deservedly won the tournament winning seven out of seven Steve, you know from your playing days obviously it doesn't matter how big a tournament is winning is a nice habit to be in yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'm with Frank. I don't think it should be, in it? Yeah, we're not but, talking about that. We're not talking about that. No, They're just Spain overall. They're no, very no, good. You've got the World Cup coming up in 2026. That's what here, but if you're in it, then you may as well go and try and win it. Yeah. And, and to do it in style, obviously, is a little cherry on the top. So, yeah, fantastic game, fantastic uh, play pretty much throughout the, the tournament. There was a lot of good teams, a lot of good football. But 
just not my cup of tea. I'll tell you what I would say watching the young players, and you think of De La Fuente, the manager, and Deschamps, who was in the game, uh, in the stadium watching the game, is my goodness, like the talent in the Spain squad and the young French boys, phenomenal. I mean, you can see why Bayern, and we've seen Elise over the years at Palace, but he was outstanding mm -hmm. today. Frank will help me out on a boy that I've not seen before at Monaco, Akayush, who was phenomenal as well. He was brilliant. And the list goes on and on and on. So you're watching, like, yeah, some pretty experienced players with the likes of Mateta, but the young kids on both sides, Spain and France, were like, you think the future's going to be bright for both countries. Yeah, you overall, you look at it and you look at Spain, obviously... Hardly any of these players probably will feature in the 2026 World Cup, but the momentum that Spain have going into that tournament here in the States, Gab, makes them favourites. Yeah, I, I'd say that's about right. I mean, obviously, you know, we're going to see where Argentina are with Messi and whatnot, but uh, there's no question that there is just so much depth there. There, there is that, I think we often overrate mentality and, and, and these other intangibles, uh, but they certainly have that. Uh, they've shown it, and uh, I think as of right now, I think they have to be, they have to be right up there.